or connect with us on social media. This is Rogers TV, Gray County. You're invited to join us on the couch first Tuesday of the month for the fifth anniversary season of your loved local LGBTQ talk show. Sometimes it's hard to say goodbye to an old friend. But when you're saying farewell to your vehicle, Kidney Car makes it fast and easy. Just call or visit our website. We'll take any vehicle in any condition and give you a tax receipt for a minimum of $300. No headaches and no towing charges. It's the one-stop solution for getting rid of your unwanted vehicle in just a few short minutes. When your vehicles reach the end of the road, call us toll-free or visit kidneycar.ca. This is Rogers TV. Hello and welcome to this special edition COVID-19 Rogers TV program dedicated to our community response to this pandemic. My name is Carol Merton and before I introduce our guests today, those of you who watch the program know that I like to spend just a few minutes at the very beginning to say thank you. So today I would like to read an excerpt from a letter that was sent. The author is Allison Wines, and this letter was actually sent to me by Francesca Dobbin, who is the executive director of the United Way Grey Bruce. So there is an invisible group of people who aren't being recognized who are working intensely to keep the world turning, to make sure that those on the front lines have the support they need, and those at home have something to go back to when we get to the other side of this. Who are you? You are the HR teams working 80 hour weeks to start workforce planning from scratch, redeploying team members, trying to think of something, anything to preserve jobs. You're the CEOs of charities writing new budgets so you can help keep the world with funding that has evaporated overnight. You're accountants and bankers restructuring finances and debt to help small businesses stay afloat. You're trade managers negotiating frantically to get hand sanitizer and face masks into the country. You're consultants supporting clients through massive change unsure if you'll get paid for your work when it's all over, but doing it anyway, because it matters. Your hospital administrators running payroll for the nurse that just clocked 30 hours of overtime. Your communicators trying to find the words to explain a crisis the likes of which has never been seen to your organization staff and to your community. My words to you, you are not invisible. Our message back to you is this. Your contributions are greatly appreciated. We send to you a most heartfelt and sincere thank you for what you are doing. And on that note, I want to also send a sincere and heartfelt thank you to my two guests today who have, are willing to join me to talk about real estate. I am delighted to welcome Tim Hudak, who is the Chief Executive Officer for the Ontario Real Estate Association, and Jennifer Tedford, who is a real estate broker here in Grey Bruce. Thank you both for joining me today. For Great sure. Time. So, I, as I said before the program began, you know, you guys can just take the show and, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll just sit back. But I, I'm really interested in how the real estate situation is, not just locally, but across the province. So I'm, I'm wondering first, if you can just explain a bit about your role, how long you've been involved in real estate, and then um, where are we going? How do people buy and sell houses these days? Who'd like to go first? 
All of that in half an hour, eh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can do this. <laughs> or we'll do another show. <laughs> Jennifer, why don't you start out? Okay, well, my name is Jennifer Tedford. I'm a broker with Remax Grey Bruce Realty. And we have offices in Own Sound, Chesley and Tara. I've been in the business about 13 years and uh, I work with my husband slash real estate partner, Dave, and we've got team members, Kelly and Christine. Excellent. And I'm yeah. Tim Hudak, so I'm CEO of the Ontario Real Estate Association. So we're almost 80,000 uh, members strong uh, across the province of Ontario from Owen Sound to uh, Ottawa, Kenora to Niagara, where I'm from. Uh, I'm a recovering politician, I will confess. I've spent uh, <laughs> 21, uh, 21 years as an elected uh, member for the uh, Niagara area and had the honor of serving as the uh, leader of the Ontario PC Party. So lots of time spent in beautiful Grey Bruce. Yes. Back, hanging out there in Concarden this past uh, summer, enjoying the West Coast view across beautiful Lake Huron. My wife's family had been investors in the area. Well, they summer cottage investors. They had the summer yeah. cottage in, uh, in Point Clark area. Um, so uh, I, I'm here in my capacity as a CEO. We play a lot of roles supporting uh, our brokers uh, like uh, Jennifer, uh, our, our agents uh, like David, uh, as well as, importantly, consumers who are interested in purchasing or selling real estate or property. And real pleasure, Carol. Thank you for having me on the show. My pleasure. I, I'm just wondering, from my understanding, and of course, I've had the pleasure, of course, of um, being affiliated with Jennifer. She was very helpful to us um, in the past. Uh, but I need to understand the difference between a broker and a real estate agent before we, we go further down the road. What's the difference? Oh, um, a broker, we take a few more courses. Uh, and we're, uh, <laughs> yeah. We take some more courses. We have a, a little bit higher level of education and we're allowed to do more on our own without supervision of our broker of record. Okay, all right. So you must have seen a difference since COVID in how, how people are um, selling homes or if they, are they even concerned about what are they gonna do? Springtime is a busy time my understanding for home sales. What's changed in the real estate market? Are you gonna answer that one, Tim? Well, you know what, Jennifer, why, why don't you do the local? And okay. uh, happy to sort of do a province wide and add on to the say here. Okay. Um, locally, uh, we're still, if we had to head this interview in the beginning of May, I could tell you a bit more about the local real estate stats. I can only go by what we did in March and we only had basically two down weeks. Um, sales are, were up in March, and as were the, the average price. Um, now, certainly, we're still seeing a reduction in listings, uh, of course, due to the situation, And but there are still some sales. Um, yeah. Basically, we I call them sort of exceptional circumstances where people need to buy and sell for whatever personal reasons. That they have. But yes, houses are still moving right now. So your advice to people is don't don't hesitate to consider selling your home even if it's not exceptional circumstances that that you are still open for business and that but business may be done in a different way is that correct? A hundred percent. We are considered to be an essential service, but we still have the rules and regulations that the government has put down that we we must follow. Um, we try to do everything virtually if we can possibly do it that way just to keep everybody safe but most importantly we follow those government of ontario guidelines that have been set out so just in a summary uh, before i go on to tim so sure. just walk me through to to explain what do you mean by virtual so i'm interested in selling my house and i need to buy a house normally i would connect with someone and i might go in and look at a house or several um, and I may have open houses, but that's not how you operate now, correct? Correct. Um, open houses just don't happen right now. Um, right. As far as if I was to have a buyer come to see me, the first thing is we would sit down and we would have a long conversation. Why are we doing it now? Is, is this an exceptional circumstance? Is this the best time for you to be buying a house? Um, my last two transactions were people who have already sold a house. So it's pretty important. They need to buy a new house or else they're going to be homeless, right? Um, I also encourage them to go back to their lender and talk to their lender because banks are kind of assessing risk right now and they're 
sort of tightening up their belts a little bit, or they can be. So I encourage that person to go back to their lender, get a new pre-approval to see exactly where they're sitting financially. And then once that happens, we uh, can do all the paperwork virtually, electronic signatures, not a problem. And we basically go through the each home on their wish list uh, by virtual tour. Hopefully the realtor has got a 3D virtual tour on it. It makes it a whole lot easier. And we go to we go through the homes together over the phone as if we were together physically. And we look at the pros and the cons of each home. Once they've narrowed down their list, then we encourage them to do a drive-by, uh, check out the neighborhood, check out the schools, maybe make arrangements that they could view the outside of the home mm -hmm. and we move on from there as far as an offer. Tim, is this is, um, the pattern that throughout Ontario uh, people are telling you that they are following? Yeah, for, for sure. And and that, you know, we as the Association of Realtors are strongly recommending. So, you know, first again, Carol, thanks for having me on. It's great having an experienced realtor and broker uh, like Jennifer Tedford on board and certainly Remax, uh, Gray Booth's uh, Realty, a highly respected brokerage. So it's you, number one thing that she's talked about, get advice from a realtor who knows what she's talking about, right? You're talking about the the biggest financial purchase that you're gonna make in your lifetime, whether it's where you raise your family or you wanna get a cottage on Lake Huron, like don't fool around. So definitely in this environment, get that advice. To the first part of what you asked, Jennifer, so province-wide, very similar. Uh, 2020 was looking at a very strong year for real estate. There's a lot of exchanges taking place. Prices were heading up depending on the region, but they were heading in a positive direction and the economy was looking good. And then there's a chart I use when I'm doing uh, some, some webinars, basically shows the the rise of COVID and then the big fall at the same time in real estate transactions. And it's understandable. People were very concerned. Uh, realtors would have cautioned their clients to say, hey, you know, let's not risk doing an open house when COVID is spreading or there might not be that many buyers mm -hmm. in the marketplace right now. So it's good to get that advice. And we certainly saw what happened in Gray Bruce across the province as a whole. In some areas, seeing real estate exchanges decline 90 to 95 percent. Wow. Yeah, wow. uh, same with uh, with showings. And, and we did, and I know Jennifer and Remax are much aligned with this, uh, ask all of our members not to do open houses. We went to the province and, you know, Lisa Thompson, we're proud to say uh, she's our minister. She's a Huron County girl, covers some of your viewing area. She's a minister responsible. So she went for bat for us, uh, got realtors dedicated as essential services. Mm -hmm. Quebec didn't do that, other states didn't do that. So that was a good thing, but it's not business as usual. We're asking our members to counsel clients. If something can be put off till after the COVID crisis is over, please counsel your client to do so. This should only be, you know, real urgent transactions. Jennifer gave some great examples. Somebody's bought a house. They've got to sell their own. They could lose their down payment or their savings. And they might be homeless or they don't buy a house or a divorce or a death. But try to keep it to only those <coughs> matters. And wherever you can, we've advised our realtors use virtual practices avoid in person where you can lisa thompson did listen and she closed down open houses that are in person open houses across the province jennifer gave you a good example of how a virtual open house can replace that so we've given those types of advice to our members who have followed it especially remax to make sure that realtors put the public health and safety first and foremost and business can wait till after the state of emergency so Jennifer, from your experience, you mentioned doing a virtual tour. So do you do, go in and do that tour or do you have the people who are interested in buying or selling their home actually take those images for you? Well, that's a, a, a problem. When you go to list your house, invariably you have to have some sort of professional come in there, whether I can't do these 3D virtual tours. So the photographers are going to have to go in there. Uh, right. home or may have to go in there if there's a sale. So that's one of the things that we talk about when discussing whether to list your house or not. There is the potential that someone outside of your immediate family will be inside the house. And that's part of that important conversation we have at the beginning is if you relist your house now, there is a potential this could happen. Um, I, the virtual uh, uh, tours are done, it's called a Matterport, it's a little camera. The, the, the fellow brings it in and he takes a 360 degree picture of each individual room and then he just moves oh. it from room to room to room. So it's great yeah. for, for other people to see it, but you still need that individual to go in the house and do that virtual tour. So would they need 
per personal protective equipment, like how, uh, you know, they're obviously going to be in a home touching surfaces, although trying probably not to. Um, how do you how do you follow follow the health unit um, restrictions and precautions? Well, you know, we when we do have to enter a house, which we really try not to do, okay, we, we, right. we do everything that we possibly can. But home inspectors and photographers are considered essential services as well. So if this That's was to happen, um, most of them would don masks, they would wear gloves, and we usually tell the homeowners to leave everything open and on so that we don't have to touch anything. Um, right. So this is very, absolutely, unless we absolutely have to. Otherwise, we try to do everything virtually if possible and like tim says if you don't need to sell right now then probably now is not the time let's let's wait till they loosen things up um, but unfortunately you do have divorces financial situations where people are these exceptional circumstances i talk about where people are are forced to list right now and i imagine too um hey jennifer in your area there'd be a lot of vacant properties and cottages and such so the risk is lower there of course great question carol our members do take precautions. And here's a, a role that your viewers might find interesting um, too. So a big role that Aria plays is to be the advocate, the voice of the realtors and the women and men and mm -hmm. families they represent. I mean, Karen Cox from C and Ski Realty in your area, she's our past president, did a, a hell of a job in our current president. So she's still on our board, gives advice and Sean Morrison, practicing realtor from Burlington. So we interact with politicians like Bill Walker. He was a former minister in, uh, in Gray Bruce. And here we said, you know, we were grateful that Premier Ford put realtors as essential services to help those people that Jennifer mentioned. We did then in return promise the government we'd behave like professionals. We would only do urgent transactions and counsel clients mm -hmm. to wait. But there are other services that are used by realtors. You asked a great question about videographers, about photographers or stages or cleaners or home inspectors that were not put on that essential services list. So as an association, Karen and Sean and I, we go to bat and we say, look, if they're using those services to uh, video, uh, um, do videography of a home for a 3D tour, that's exactly what the province wants. And you don't have to do the in-person tours. People can make their decisions and then go look later on or if they want to, right? So we did get the uh, province of Ontario to say that it was okay to use those types of services, even if not on the essential list, but if they're supporting a real estate exchange and they are deemed essential. So that's part of the insight yes. of what we do uh, in Toronto on behalf of realtors and clients. So it sounds like, I mean, in healthcare, we talk about standards of practice, but it sounds like across Ontario, there are standards of practice expected in this COVID-19 with real estate brokers and agents where there's there's consistency in the approach to to follow the guidelines. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very proud, and Jennifer will have a comment what she's seeing Gray and Bruce, but I'm very proud that our leading brokers like Remax, Stinsky, Realty as a, an independent, that, you know, they were out of the gate along with Aria saying to agents, let's let's put business behind uh, what's going to be good for the public and look after your clients. And we've seen that happening, and now open houses have been closed down, and we've moved to virtual uh, open houses. Uh, they do expect us to act as professionals. I believe we are yes. doing so. Um, but mm -hmm. the last thing of yours, oh, there's also a regulator. They're called the Real Estate Council of Ontario, RECO, R-E-C-O. They kind of act like the the police of the system, if you will, um, sort of like the Alcohol mm -hmm. and Gaming Commission, also for bars and restaurants and gambling operations. So they have the ability to levy uh, fees and fines. They've been given new powers under uh, Minister Thompson's legislation to suspend and revoke licenses for people who don't follow the rules. Our members uh -huh. are doing so. Yeah but there is a complaint system if somebody is playing fast and loose with the rules. Right. So now that we've been into this for a few weeks, actually longer than anyone hoped or expected, are you finding that it's taking longer, this process of buying and selling homes? Um, Jennifer, from your experience, turnaround, I guess is the market term. I don't know. You'll have to tell me what the term is. <laughs> I, I think, yes, it, it, it does take longer. Um, we certainly uh, have to allow extra time and conditions for financing. Things like appraisers. Appraisers aren't going into houses to to look at them to you know appraise their value anymore. So so we need to allow that extra time for those other professionals to do their jobs 
in the, the way that they can do it. So, you know, what used to be a two week process sometimes can be up to two and a half, three weeks in some situations. Yes. Yeah. So people need to factor that in, you know, it's that the things are different and they just have to allow for that process to unfold from the people who have purchased homes using this new way the you know the the virtual way what are you hearing back from them what do you what's the, you know i guess in the business we call it satisfaction surveys but what's the feedback um it's still pretty new so i haven't had a whole lot of feedback you got to remember houses usually don't sell for 30 or 60 days um That's i true. think that the individuals recognize the challenge i think uh they understand why that challenge is there and they don't have any qualms with following the rules, but it's just it's just more of a challenge for everybody to deal with. I have one lady that uh, needs to buy a new bed for her new house when she gets it at the end of June, and uh, she's got no place to try out her bed to buy it. So, you know, the, uh, uh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. so, you know the, I, those are all just learning curves that we all have to go through, right? Yeah. I, I do That's, think, um, Carol, that you will see a lot of people who are very interested, though, in the property market and buying a home. I, I just think we've we've undergone, for good reason, this grand experiment. We're all like lab rats, you know, kept in our homes, right? And, you know, <laughs> uh, God bless my kids. I, I love them dearly. But, you know, being a CEO and I try to be a decent husband and a dad and a principal and a teacher <laughs> kind of driving me crazy. And I've had every, I know Debbie Nair like this. Jennifer, you, uh, you were hearing this locally. I think every couple's probably had a conversation during this about what they love, what they hate about their house, and if they want to move. Or if you cooped up in a condo in downtown Toronto, or or you want to downsize and or buy a cottage, you know, along Lake Huron, a nice place in Meaford or Owen Sound or Bogner or wherever. I think there's going to be a lot of interest. And what we're going to suggest to the government uh, when they start looking at stimulus is that real estate can really help Ontario lead the economic and confidence recovery. I mean, you know when you buy a home, then you usually make repairs to the home. You buy furniture, appliances, or spin-off jobs in, in maintenance and the mover. So if we want to get Ontario back on its feet, doing things like eliminating the land transfer taxes for economic activity, that could really help get Ontario moving again. And that certainly there are lessons that we're all learning through this this experiment. But but that kind of what you're mentioning are, are opportunities. You know, it, it may be a dark cloud, but there's potentially a little bit of silver lining in in the future as well. From your perception, Tim, do you think this is going to change the way real estate business happens in the future? You know, I, I do. And it'd be great hearing Jennifer's point of view as somebody who has you know, a decade and a half of experience and is a leader. Um, I've just been doing this for three years. So my, my gut tells me that realtors who were ahead of the curve and already had a lot of these tools around virtual tours, great photography, a way to feel like you're inside the house and not being in it, have an advantage in this marketplace. And so as a result, they're ahead of others. I think other realtors will take up these tools. But I think consumers are getting more and more sophisticated. They have a better ability to do more searches themselves. Remember the old days where you'd walk down to the real estate office in you know, downtown in Concord and you'd look at the pictures on the wall, yeah. and try to figure it out. The realtor had that Bible you could leap through. Well, consumers yeah. have to do much more of the work, and it's probably a good thing. And they'll do more virtual tours now. They say, okay, I don't like the way that looks. Maybe look at this. There's other tools coming along that blow your mind. Like you can look into a kitchen, and you can say, okay, what if I had the cupboards changed and an island here and the table was over there, and apps can help you look at that. And then order the furniture, too, if you want, right? So I think you'll see I consumers need that. the upfront work, and then the realtor is there for the really heavy lifting, the negotiating, helping guide that process uh, at the end of the day. That's my guess. Yeah. Jennifer, what are your thoughts? I consider uh, Dave and I are more mm -hmm. of information givers right now. So people come to us and they say, you know, what should we do? What's going on with the real estate market? And, and that's basically our role. We're not advertising right now. We're just here if people need us. And that's kind of the status quo way we're running until things are more back to normal than what they are now for sure. Yeah. So when things are back to normal, Jennifer, do you think, well, I, I remain hopeful and optimistic, okay? When things, I never, um, yeah. Will you, will you change your practice? And if so, how? Um, I don't, I don't know that I would so much change my practice. I, I always made sure that my clients were 
informed they were aware before we went house hunting or and the same as if they were selling their home um perhaps maybe we'll still have these um heavy conversations in the in the beginning you know to make sure that this is the right time for them and the reasons for buying and selling um i, I think that what this whole self-isolation thing has done for me is it's taught me to slow down a little bit and it's not let's not run around um at these frenetic paces let's just sort of sit back and enjoy what's around us and just just take things in and i think everybody needs to do that even those who are in the home of buying and selling process so tell me from from your perspective and across all of Ontario, I, I can't help but think this must be very stressful for real estate agents, for sure. Just what strategies um, are being put into place for coping for real estate agents? Because it, it is a high energy business, right? It's, it is. Know. And uh, I suspect, you know, watching you uh, across Skype here, Carol, you're the same way. Um, Jennifer is by definition, you, you got to be a people person. You've got to be a hustler. You've got to be uh, at the community events, know what's going on in the background, know what's happening in the neighborhood, you know, where new buildings are going, what the school is like. And when you're locked up in, in your cage, um, it's almost like having your arm cut off. So our, our members are feeling it, just like hardworking Ontarians are, but they're particularly sensitive because they thrive on human interaction. So what's impressed me the most in, of doing a lot of uh, teleconferences with our members is how much they care about their clients. Like their biggest concern is always, I had a family, you know, they're looking to, to move up, the kids are getting bigger, and their small business now is on the rocks, and they, they may not be able to do that. Or a senior couple looking at downsizing, the kids have all moved away and everything is suspended. So our, our, our members really care deeply about the, the health and financial wherewithal of their, of their clients. But you're right, there'll be stresses. So one thing we do as an association is, is we try to assist with, with mental health, financial planning. There's a couple mm -hmm. of things that we love to help our members. But bottom line is I've been very proud to see that realtors have put public health and safety first and they're looking out for their clients and worry about them every day. I'm wondering about as we move forward and, and there's no doubt there's been financial stresses across the whole spectrum. Um, real estate brokers and agents um, work closely with financial institutions. Do you anticipate that there will be opportunities mm -hmm. as people move forward you know, they're not always going to have the money that they could have had because they've been without jobs. So we have about a minute and a half in the program. Who wants to tackle that one? <laughs> I'll give that one to Jennifer. I've been talking a lot this last stuff. Really <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, you know, we're, we're going to have to wait and see what the future brings. Um, yeah. Certainly there could be some for sales or foreclosures down the road. Um, hopefully there won't be too many. Hopefully the, the government programs have been able to help a lot of these people. But I, I guess the general public just needs to know that their realtors will be there to help them should that situation arise. And uh, that's, I think, part of us being essential is, is to help people through those difficult times. And we will be there if, if they do need us. So really what you're saying is it's more than just selling homes. It's moving families and supporting people in big decisions as they go along. 100%. That, that's where the professionalism comes in. I want to thank you both very much for being on the program. It's been wonderful hearing the perspective. And I want to thank our viewing audience for joining us today. Please join us again to learn more about resources that are available to you in your community throughout this COVID-19 pandemic. Take care, stay safe, and take care of each other. Thank you.